Hey guys, uh, Laura here from Sepsis Education and your Sepsis Stories podcast because I'm recording at the same time, uh, basically, um, because today is a very important day. Um, today is World Mental Health Day and the reason why I'm coming on today to talk to you is about the mental health aspect that goes with post-sepsis syndrome. When there is such a trauma when it comes to the body, I it's only normal that there's going to be um, mental health stuff that goes with it. Um, and for me, after I had sepsis, it was actually one of the most difficult things to come to terms with because I got out of hospital and it was like, yeah, okay, I'm out, that's good, yay. Um, and then things started to go weird, like when I... I think it was when I started to get the nightmares that it really started to affect me because when I had the nightmares, I didn't want to go to sleep. Um, <laughs> the funny one was the fact a lot of people do talk about insomnia as being a physical aspect of PSS. But for me, it was a real mental thing because it meant that I wasn't sleeping. And then I would have like the brain fog. And when I had the brain fog, it would give me such anxiety and such frustration when I was writing my patient notes. Um, and the amount of times that I would just burst out crying for no reason whatsoever and I have no idea why. Even to this day. Um, like, earlier on today I was um, just literally sitting down and all of a sudden just started crying. And it's like two and a half years, well more than two and a half years since I had sepsis. And like, I know at the moment I've I've had a bit of a tough week. Um, don't ask, it's all a load of different things that just kind of add up and add up and add up and add up. And so I just feel that at the moment I just feel like I'm on one of those scales that you have when you're younger and like when you're learning how to like weigh stuff and then it's like, 10 grams, then 10 grams, then 10 grams, and everything is just getting heavier. And so that's kind of what I've been feeling this week. But I wanted to actually say that this is normal. Um, and if ever you are having anxiety, please contact the GP. Uh, or your or your um, mental health provider. Um, I know with the NHS you can actually go on to self refer for CBT. Um, it works for some people; it doesn't work for others, but it's worth a try. Um, but then there's it's always really important to speak to your health provider anyway because if need be they can give you medication and for me last year I really did need that. Um, when I was having the massive panic attacks um, last year and even earlier on this year um, I had my last one on Friday. The fact that I would never know when they were coming, and that's the scary thing. 
Um, and like for me, a lot of it is to do. I know a lot of it's to do with the sepsis. Um, like flashbacks back into A and E and into recovery and um, and then into the ward afterwards. Um, but then I've been triggered this week by different things like medical things not me personally but by other people and it has affected me more than I thought it would um, but Getting help, I know it sounds scary, but as soon as you ask for help, things get easier. Um, if you, even if it's not going to the doctors, but speaking to a friend, um, it is so good just to actually let things off your chest, talk it out. Um, I know that for me, one person that I've, well, two people that I've been talking to um, are Ryan and his mum. And um, I really opened up about something that I only remembered um, on Friday, um, no, on Thursday night, um, because I had, an, I had a flashback of it and it was, it was terrifying. Um, I'm not actually going to go into what it is because it is actually quite personal. Um, but it was the fact that our brain is a very complicated thing and it will kind of hide things that it doesn't want you to know. Um, because it thinks it's kind of protecting you, but sometimes it's just suppressing. Um, and actually having the medication last year, um, I did come off it, uh, because I was on it for about five months, um, I was on sertraline, I was on propranolol, um, and I was also on beta histine dihydrochloride. Um, and it was basically, the anxiety was then giving me vertigo. So the propranolol and the beta histine were for that, for the vertigo and then the sertraline was for the um, anxiety and PTSD. But even if you don't feel that your doctor is looking after you or taking you seriously, get a second opinion. Um, the hardest thing that you will do is actually um, speak to them. And I know I've said that a few times, but it's true. Um, luckily, I've got an extremely amazing um, support network. Um, and Ryan has just been incredible. But...
I know that if I didn't have that, I don't know if I would be here right now. Um, there's always going to be ups and downs. Always. It doesn't matter. Um, if you're finding it difficult, uh, I am here if you need. Um, I'm... Uh, I'm on Instagram, as in Laura Williams at dot sepsis educator. Um, I'm more than happy to chat over on that. Um, so yeah, just take it easy, stay safe, and stay well. All right, take care, guys. Bye.